Hey everybody, welcome, and today we're gonna check out something really cool. We're gonna use an app called Zig Sim on our iOS device to get a ton of data from a native iOS device into Touch Designer quickly and easily. Now, I know you might be thinking to yourself, oh, Elbers, you know, we've been doing that for a very long time, but this app really takes it to the next level. Not just the ability to get, you know, basic sensor data, but we're gonna see some really cool tricks about how we can access NDI streams of both the color and depth from the iOS device itself, as well as working with AR Kit and some of the cool built-in tracking features inside of iOS. So what you can see here on my screen is the right side, I've got Touch Designer open. On the left side, I'm mirroring my iPhone. So let's go ahead and start with Zig Sim because there are two versions of this app. One is called Zig Sim, and it's the free version that you can get both on the iOS App Store as well as the Play Store. And the other one is called Zig Sim Pro, which costs about five bucks Canadian on the iOS store and comes with all of the enhanced features that we're gonna talk about. So if we're just gonna start with Zig Sim, which still on its own, even as a free version, is super sick. Let me go up into here. And this is what you're gonna be greeted with when you come in. So you're gonna see all of the different sensors that you can turn on on your device. Now, before we even get too excited with different sensors, first let's actually set up the connection between Zig Sim and our computer. Now, luckily, this is really easy to do. So I'm going to go to the settings here. And what we're going to see is the ability to choose whether we want the data to go to a local file, so we could even record some of the data, or if we want that to go to another app. Now, most of the time, I think you're going to be using this in the live context. So we're going to leave other app turned on. I'm going to leave my protocol as UDP. Then what you're going to need to do is set the IP address of the computer running touch designer that you want to send your data to. Now, this is gonna be pretty easy for me because right now I'm just running my computer and my iOS device on the same network. So I don't have to worry about any kind of firewalls or anything like that. Everything's gonna be easy to connect. Now, if you do need to know your IP address on Windows, uh, it's pretty easy to do. What you can do is come to the bottom right corner where you have your little network icon. Now, I'm hardwired into my network, but you might have the little Wi-Fi logo, hit logo here. You can right click on it, hit open network and internet settings. And then you can just scroll down to view your network properties. Now when you click this, you're going to get all kinds of different devices that you have that are available to connect to the network. And you're just going to look for the one that says connectivity connected to the internet. That's going to be the main one. Because you might find other ones in here that aren't connected to the internet or they say something like disconnected. So in this case, this is the connection that I'm using on this computer to connect to my network. And if I find my IPv4 address, that's going to be your IP address on the network. I can see it's 192.168.0.200. Now I already did a test run of this, that's why that's here, but you can replace this with whatever would be your IP address. For your port number, you can really select whatever you want. Uh, I think 50,000 is a good one to use. I think it's the default one, but you could set whatever you want. Just make sure that if you're using a bunch of different devices to do different kinds of communication, that you don't end up using the same port for different applications. Then what we can do is select our message format. Now you can either select between a JSON format or an OSC format. I think for most people, the OSC format is gonna be what you're going to use because it's gonna be quickly accessible and ready to use immediately inside a touch designer. But if you do end up using more of the advanced features and maybe you wanna do some parsing inside of Python, then maybe you can switch that over to the JSON format and I'll show you how to connect to that. Now we also have this message rate, which per second is by default set to one. And if you leave it set to one, you're gonna notice that the data's coming through really slow because you're only getting one sample every second. Now for this test, I'm just gonna set this to be at 30 messages per second. But if you are running, you know, um, some kind of installation running at 60 FPS or even faster, maybe you're using some kind of VR situation and maybe you tape this to the VR headset, you could easily turn that up to 60 messages per second. And that's all we really have to do here. So what I can do now is go back to the sensor page. And what you're gonna see is as we start clicking through sensors, and actually you don't see this on the screen mirroring, but you can see here on my phone, it's gonna start asking you for permission to access those sensors. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow as I go through. And just for the first basic example here, let's turn on the accelerometer, gyroscope, let's turn on 2D touch, and let's turn on mic level at the bottom here. Now, once you've done going through and selecting all of the different kind of elements you want, all the sensors you want the data from, all you have to do is click start in that bottom middle bar here. Now you're immediately gonna see all this data flying by on the screen. And as I 
move the phone around and do different things, you're going to see all that data fluctuating. So far, so good. So let's hop into Touch Designer and now receive this data. So now this is going to be really easy because we set it to OSC. So I can just go ahead and create an OSC in CHOP. And then all I have to do is set the network port to whatever port I set inside of the settings of ZigZim. So in this case, it's going to be 50,000. And boom, there it is. We have data coming in. Now you're going to see the data is going to have these long address names because you know, if you imagine working with this in an installation, you could have lots of different phones out there connected. So all of the phones talking on ZigSim are going to have first this ZigSim forward slash. Then they're going to have a unique device ID. So that way, if you did have multiple different devices doing different things in the installation, at least you'd be able to select, chop out different chunks of it based on which devices they're coming from. And then you're going to have the name of the sensor you're getting. So let's do something fun. Let's plug this into a trail chop just so we can watch some of these values go by. And let's see here. First we have gyroscope is always the easiest one because if I do things like start to rotate my phone in different directions, we can see different channels here, especially these gyro one, two, and three ones starting to move. And we can also see that acceleration is working. So if I move my phone quickly in any direction, we can see those channels spike. And then we can even look down here at our mic levels. And we can see that we're getting kind of a real time level of the microphone here. And then the cool part is this touch count here, which you can see once I press down, I get a touch count of one. And then I have a very nice negative one to one normalized X position and very similarly negative one to positive one normalized Y position. Now the cool thing about this is also it counts multiple touches. So if I wanted one touch, have that down. If I add my second finger, all of a sudden my touch count is two and you can see now it's doubled up the amount of touch channels I have, which both of them work independently of each other. I could keep adding touches here and it'll just keep appending channels for me for each one of those finger touches and they all work independently pretty smoothly. So that's really great, and I think that kind of encompasses all the really fun stuff you could do with the free version. Like, especially even if we go back to the sensors page, you can see we didn't even turn on half of these sensors. We can get the gravity center, we can get compass, pressure, GPS coordinates, use it as a Bluetooth beacon, and much more stuff. But I think a lot of the fun stuff is gonna be when people see what's inside of the pro version. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to switch over to the pro version. And the first thing you're going to see is the sensor pages. It has a lot more stuff in here. We can see NDI at the top. We can see AR kit. We can see image detection. Lots of fun stuff. So just to make sure this is working, let's hop into our settings here and make sure we have the same settings assigned because by default, you probably don't. So similarly to what we did before, we're going to set it to other app. We're going to make sure our protocol is UDP. You're going to make sure you type in the correct IP address. So for me, that's 192.168.0.200. You're going to change the port number. And then you're going to make sure your message rate is set to whatever you want it to be set to for how accurate and how much data you need. Now, once we've gone ahead and done that, let's hop back to the sensor page. And just to make sure this is working, let's try a couple simple ones. So we'll turn mic level back on. We'll turn on the touch. And then we'll turn on the gyroscope and acceleration just like we did before. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And what you're going to notice is now because I'm using the different app, it's actually generated a different device ID for me. So what I'm going to do on the OSC in chop, a really useful thing you can do is hit this reset channels pulse button. And that'll basically just clear out any old channels that aren't active anymore. So now these are all of the channels from our ZigSim Pro app here. And we can see very similarly, if I look inside of my trail chop, we can see the mic level channels working. We can see my gyroscopes down here working as intended. Accelerometers are working. Everything seems to be working great. Now where ZigSim Pro comes in really cool and interesting use cases is if we go back to the sensor page, and I want to just turn off all these extra sensors for now, just because we don't need them. And I want to start looking at the NDI sensor. 
So I'm gonna click on the little arrow next to NDI and what you're gonna see is you have another set of features just for this NDI kind of stream. And I think one of the most interesting ones is that we can choose between getting just the raw RGB camera, the depth camera, which is really interesting, or a combination of both, which is what we're gonna use right now. You can also select the camera. So in this case, I'll use the rear camera. You can select the depth mode, the resolution, I'll just leave it on HD for now. And then what we're gonna do once we're finished setting up our kind of settings for the NDI stream is go back and then make sure that we toggle on the little check mark next to the NDI word. So what we do is click on NDI and we'll see this little check mark go on here, which is saying that the NDI stream is now active. And then what we can do is go to start at the bottom and that's gonna engage the transmission of that kind of data. Now, since we're now using NDI and not OSC, I have to make an NDI in top. And then in the source name area, we're gonna see ES admins iPhone, which is my ad iPhone, and it's gonna say ZigSim Pro. So we'll click on that. And now, hello, we're gonna see this little, let's get this angle here. We're gonna see the RGB camera feed coming through. But what you might also notice that's interesting is all of this extra alpha data. And that might look weird, especially if you're looking at the RGB data only. But what you should know is that the alpha channel is actually the depth map. So what I could do, for example, just to preview this, is activate the viewer, hover my mouse over that viewer and hit A, and that's gonna isolate the alpha channel inside of that viewer. And now you can see we have a pretty decent kind of depth map here. You know, might not be something that you wanna use for just doing 3D scans or anything very highly precise, but if you're doing an installation and maybe you need some kind of range detection between how far away something might be from an object, this could be a really easy way to do that because you can see as something gets farther away, its alpha channel value goes higher and higher. And as something gets closer and closer to the camera, it becomes closer and closer to alpha zero. So now that's a really cool feature. Let me uh, get this alpha mode out of here. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.